Hey, everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. And I think Tesla FUD will backfire. So we've been reporting on Tesla every week for nine years. Let that sink in for a second, right? If you do something every week, practically every day for nine years, you usually get pretty good at it. One thing that we've seen quite a bit when it comes to Tesla is this. We want to turn now to that major recall involving more than 2 million Tesla cars. That's nearly all of the electric vehicles Tesla has sold in the U.S. Is this frustrating? Very frustrating. Tell me about that. I want Elon Musk to do something about this. <laughs> Probably help us out. Tesla shares under pressure after the EV company narrowly <laughs> missed earnings estimates. Yeah, it's called FUD. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and it works remarkably well, which is why legacy media uses it. Elon Musk. All of Elon Musk's companies are competing with it, and in many cases, beating the entrenched, established companies. These companies spend millions of dollars on advertising and political lobbying, and so what do they do? They make a few phone calls, pay for a few steak dinners, and get their corporate talking heads to dish out the FUD. And like we said, it's remarkably effective. Yeah, there's no reason that Tesla's stock price should be down here below $200. Now, disclaimer, we're not financial advisors. Do your own research. Investing involves risk. But one of the latest stories is this rumor. Tesla stock drops on report it is reducing EV output at Giga Shanghai. But this report is a story from Bloomberg based on rumors. They can't even give their source. Um, and so I guess now that counts as news. So Bloomberg's own sales data for Tesla car sales in China looks really strong. Take a look at this. And Tesla ran at full capacity in 2023 just to keep up with demand. I mean, take a look at this chart. Mm -hmm. But Bloomberg says, quote, the U.S. car maker earlier this month instructed employees at its Shanghai facility to lower production of both the Model Y and the Model 3, the two vehicles that Tesla makes in China, by working five days a week instead of the usual six and a half days, the people said, asking not to be identified because they're not authorized to speak publicly. So no info on how long or why or who said it or even when this was. This could have been back during the supply challenges, right? But hey. Let's run the story anyway and create a little FUD. The Bloomberg report goes on to say some of the production lines at Tesla's Shanghai plant, including the battery workshops, are subject to longer suspensions, one of the people said. Tesla has told staff and some suppliers to be prepared for extended production limits through April. In early April, China will celebrate Tomb Sweeping Day, a holiday that's typically a quiet time for consumption. Now again, Disclaimer, we're not financial advisors. Please don't listen to us knuckleheads. But if you think that this story is some kind of indication that Tesla is in trouble and it has a demand problem, then please, please don't be a Tesla investor. I just want to also point out that there are certain times of the year, the time we just went through, where car sales are low because temperatures are low in a lot of the country and a lot of the world and people don't like buying cars in the winter, right? That's just a known cyclical thing. So what the news has seemed to have done is said this story about how uh, EV sales are dropping and then they just get to keep multiplying that story until it becomes like the truth. But how about some hard numbers? According to China's Passenger Car Association, Giga Shanghai delivered 131,000 vehicles in the first two months of 2024. Now, that is a 6% drop year over year. But 53% of this number, about 70,000, were delivered in China. The rest were exported out of China. Tesla's only close competition in the EV market is BYD, which sold 311,000 BEVs in China in the first two months of this year. And going back to FUD being effective, it is super effective because of the D, the doubt piece. If you haven't already experienced something for yourself, then you're very susceptible to someone swaying you about that thing. Take, for example, a new movie that comes out. You ask your friend, hey, you just saw that new movie. Did you like it? Should I see it? And if they say, nah, it was pretty bad. I wouldn't waste your time. It was a snooze fest. What are you going to do? You're probably not going to choose to see that movie. You're paying 20 bucks to see it on Friday night. You now have doubt about that movie. But what if you had already seen that movie, loved it, and you overheard your friend telling someone else the exact same thing, that they didn't like it. It was a snooze fest, etc. Would you doubt your feelings about the movie? Or would you chime in, hey, for what it's worth, I loved it. Not only is doubt a powerful force, but it's easy to create. The sad reason that I don't read comments on articles anymore is that so many of those comments are from people who aren't really people. They're bots or trolls. We do a pretty good job of keeping our comments clean from the bots and trolls by removing them. So they never really have flourished here. Um, and so they don't really focus on what we're talking about. But when the Fudsters find a site where there's no weeding, they flourish. <clears throat> electric, and they post after every article. Comments designed to make you doubt Tesla and EVs. Read enough of these, 
And it's only human nature that you're going to start doubting your own position. And look at what started this whole conversation, right? Bloomberg published an article based on rumors. So then big news organizations can hide behind their stories that may never even have had any truth to them just to plant seeds of doubt that, quote, Tesla demand may be falling. They only have to keep it going for a short amount of time before it becomes the truth. Case in point, the 1988 Mexico presidential elections. Carlos Salinas was not the favorite. The populace in Mexico did not seem to want him to become president. Many early polls showed this. So what did the drug cartels do to keep their corrupt man elected? There was a new computer system being used that year that was going to count the votes faster so that it wouldn't take days or weeks to tally the results. And what the cartels did was pay off one of the programmers to run a shadow program with fake early results that showed Salinas winning. So early on election day, the media started broadcasting these early fake results showing that Salinas was in the lead. And do you know what people did? They stayed home. They didn't vote. They doubted their own vote. Well, the other guy's going to win, so I guess I was wrong, so why bother voting? Then a crazy thing happened, which proves my theory here. A Mexican congressman who was watching the election results in Mexico City on this computer system, he spotted something that seemed off, and he started making noise and talking to the press. The cartel's lackeys were completely flustered, and in a hurried attempt to not get caught, they shut down the computer system. That was enough for the press and the people of Mexico to understand that there had been something wrong, that they'd been duped. So people in record numbers started to go to the polls that day and voted. So did the opposition candidate win? No. The cartels sent out thugs to key polling places throughout the country. They changed the tally results. They burned ballots so that no one could do a recount. And miraculously, their candidate, Salinas, won with a 50.3% of the vote. Now, you may be saying right about now, well, hang on. This episode is titled Tesla FUD will backfire. But that corrupt politician in Mexico you just told us got elected. He did. But Mexico then reformed their election system. And in the year 2000, the PRI, which was the party of the corrupt president, finally lost an election after 71 years of being in power. So when FUDsters overplay their hand, they may get initial results that they want like this bullshit story that we've been getting for the past few months about EV demand is down. People don't want EVs. But when people finally do learn the truth, well, let's just say most people don't like being duped. And so they react faster than they would have. And that is our prediction with Tesla, because we've seen it happen time and time again. Someone has a bunch of lies that they've been fed about Tesla. Then they get in a Tesla with someone who knows the truth. Their lies get exposed and they go, wait, a Tesla is cheaper than a gas car, it's safer, it has plenty of range, and is easy to charge? I want one. And we're watching it happen before our eyes. Why do you think Tesla sells more EVs than any other American auto company? By like a factor of 10. Because those who have opened their eyes and taken the time to learn the truth have acted on that truth. It's only the ones who still believe the lies, whether they're lies of omission or outright lies of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, who remain on the sidelines. So thank you so much to everyone for watching. Please let us know in the comments below if this was you. Were you lied to about Tesla? What helped you to wake up to the truth? We'll see you next week on Disruptive Investing.